since ages we have been told about the numerous health benefits of consuming fruits every day. But are all fruits good for diabetics or for anybody really because diabetes can happen to anybody? Well, people with diabetes are suggested to be mindful about their carbohydrate and sugar intake, which can lead to insulin fluctuations and may lead to spike in blood sugar levels. While fruits are generally a healthy choice, some fruits have high sucrose and fructose, which may hamper their insulin levels. Hello everyone, welcome back to Ifechi Health and Wellness. Not long ago, I uploaded a video and I listed some fruits that are low in sugar, which we can be consuming more than others. And in that video, I promise I'm going to come up with fruits that should be avoided, which will easily spike up our sugars, whether you're diabetic or not, but more so, more so people who are diabetic. And number one on the list is watermelon. You know, when I talked about the fruits low in sugar, I mentioned a honeydew melon. Honeydew melon, those ones are good, they are low. But watermelon, which a lot of people consume, especially during hot weather, is actually one of the most loved summer fruits. I know that. But it has a high GI. GI is glycemic index, which is how sugar is released in your system. So anything with high GI should be avoided. So watermelon, surprisingly, has a GI of whooping 72 to 80. And due to its relatively high sugar content, it is important to consume in moderation. I've talked about GM low and high GI foods and fruits before. I just want to quickly list some, I think about six or seven fruits I picked up that are not good, which we love to consume every day, all the time. So that's watermelon is number one, whooping 72 to 80 uh, of G GI, which is very, very high. Bananas yeah, is number two, is bana uh, bananas. Bananas have uh, varying G, a varying GI of 42 to 62, not as high as watermelon, depending on their ripeness, because the more ripe the bananas are, the more the sugar content, obviously. So ripe bananas tend to have a higher GI. So it's best to choose less ripe bananas and eat them in moderation. I know we don't like it when, when it's not very ripe, but yeah, it's the best way to eat it when it's not very ripe. Then number three is... um. Pineapple, actually, I do love pineapple, but it has a moderate to high GI, about 50 to 66. So it's quite moderate to high, um, high along with high amounts of natural sugars, which can instantly spike sugar levels. So it is good to consume them in moderation. We're not saying don't eat them at all because pineapples are very good. They are very good, but in moderation. The next one, which is one of my best fruits, is mango. Mango is one of the most loved fruits. Yes, I love them. And they have moderate uh, GI of 51 to 60 and high sucrose and fructose uh, levels, which makes it import important for diabetics to consume in a small portion or to avoid spiking their sugar. The next one are grapes. You know, grapes, we love grapes, don't we? Either the red ones, white ones, black ones. But grapes have a moderate GI of 46 to 53, but their small size can lead to overconsumption. So diabetics must avoid overeating grapes. Yeah, because once you are popping them in your mouth, you love them, especially when they're sweet, but they are loaded with, you know, they're high in sugar. So if you have to have them, all in moderation. The next one are cherries. Cherries, you know, it's not too bad actually, but it can vary between 20 to 63 GI, but they are generally uh, moderate to high. So it de depends on the type of cherry. Some of them are sweet, some of them are not. So it's advisable to limit the consumption of cherries. The next one, 
on my list, which is the last one I have for today on my list, are raisins. Raisins are dried grapes and have a relatively high GI, 43 to 64. They are concentrated sources of sugar yeah, and should be consumed, but very, very little. Because once the, something is dried, again, the sweetness in all these raisins, you can tell that they're quite sweet. So make sure, yeah, you can have them, but in a very limited quantity. Let me quickly talk about GI now. So that saves me doing it as a separate video. What is actually GI? Glycemic index. It's a rating system for foods containing carbohydrates. It shows how quickly each food affects your blood sugar or your glucose level when they're consumed. And quickly, let me run through when I say low, medium, high GI. Low GI is anything that is below 55. So if you look at those um, video, the video I did before regarding the low GI, the food that are low in sugar, they are low, low GI. That means they're less than 55. An example, so obviously uh, there are so many examples, those f uh, fruits I listed before, I don't want to go through them again. They are low in GI. So anything less than 55 is, uh, less than 55 is low. Medium GI is anything between 55 to 70. That's medium. High GI is anything greater than 70. And remember, when I mentioned, uh, if you go back to this uh, vi video, you can see that the first one I listed, which was the um, watermelon, that they were actually quite high, 73 to 80. So they're very, very high. And great G high GI is greater than 70. So watermelon is very high. In GI. So when you're consuming them during when when you're really hot, and a lot of people like to have melon, just bear that in mind that you are consuming something with yes, it's fruit, is good for you to some extent, but it has very high sugar content. So it's very important to know this. I thought I'll just run this quickly. So when I talk about GI, you understand what I mean. As I say, it shows how quickly each food we eat affects our blood sugar or our glucose level. So that's what we mean by GI, high GI, medium GI, and low GI. So always look at these things before you consume things and anything you eat, please eat them to a minimal. Thank you so much.